Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. You normally hear about players who get in trouble as opposed to the ones who surprise you by doing good deeds. And during this coronavirus tragedy, some good stories are emerging about local players. We know Kevin Love started it by donating $100,000 to the part-time workers who were laid off at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. And Denzel Ward of the Browns, who is helping 21 families whose head of household lost his or her job due to the virus. But what about former Indian Shin Su Chu, who is giving 190 Texas Rangers minor leaguers $1,000 apiece to help them while their salaries are being held up? You know, it's easy to say what's $190,000 to a guy who stands to make $21 million if the season plays itself out. I don't know what that number would be that would satisfy people who would say that, but what Chu, Love, and Ward and others have done shows you that not all pro athletes are totally absorbed in themselves. We've got another former athlete with us. It's Brian Anderson, former Indians pitcher. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 34th consecutive year, seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. What a great treat to have uh, Brian Anderson, former Indians pitcher, major league pitcher, who's pitched in some of the biggest games in, in baseball history. B.A., that's you, isn't it? With that big <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Les, great to be with you. Great, great to have Obviously, wish I could be in the studio with you, but we'll, we'll make the best of it, and, and thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. How, how are the kids getting along through this uh, horrible time? Well, you know, the, the, the older kids, um, obviously, you know, with the schoolwork, and, and they're doing the online learning and, and all of that, and I'm sure that that's, uh, that's not news to anybody. You have kids that are of school age, so, you know, they're dealing with that, and thankfully, that takes up, you know, a, a chunk of their day. Um, and then you try to keep them active. And, and I know that the older kids, you know, up in Ohio are, are doing that, working out in the driveway, going for runs and stuff like that. But it, it's it's difficult because they're aware of what's going on and there's not a whole lot that they can, you know, that they can do. And, and you're self-quarantining and uh, it's a tough time for everybody. I, I think that goes even without saying. And, and we've got a long way to go um, down here. I'm down in Florida right now. And my younger kids, uh, four and one, they're kind of oblivious to everything right now. And so they're enjoying having mom and dad at home watching TV and playing games with them all day long. They just, uh, they don't have a, any idea of what's going on and, and probably for the best. What is, what is today? It should have been maybe game number four of the American League season for you if uh, all things are going the right way? Well, we would have started Thursday, had a Friday off, Saturday, Sunday, so that's three, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We would have been in Arlington yeah. getting ready to play uh, the Rangers at the new ballpark. So it would have been game number seven. We would have just finished up a series with the Yankees after starting off with the Pirates. Um, and ironically enough, this would be the beginning of a road trip where we would play the Rangers, uh, go to Boston, play the Red Sox, and then head into Cleveland to play the Tribe in a four-game weekend series here coming up in about a week and a half. But obviously, we know that that's not going to happen. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. If you uh, would like to email us during the show, you can do that at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Brian Anderson with us. Uh, Brian, I, I keep getting people saying, well, why didn't Hargrove leave Brian Anderson in instead of putting in Jose Mason? <laughs> first of all, you know, that, would mean, that would mean you'd have to bat first, right? Your position was coming up in the lineup. It was. And, and that's the thing, you know, even if it wouldn't have been, there was no way in that situation. And I know that my role had changed as the postseason had gone on. You know, when I got added to the team for the ALCS against the Orioles, Mike Hargrove called me into his office and he said, look, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to use you. Be ready from pitch number one. And so that's kind of the way it started. And then all of a sudden, as that series, you know, started to develop, I found myself pitching more towards the end of games with Asenmacher and Jackson. Of course, Mesa was our closer. Um, so my role had completely changed. But at the same time, you're talking about a game seven. Okay, I come in and I do my job and I, I get Jeff Conan out. It's funny because that the dynamic of that matchup, I remember – reading a story where Mike Jackson was in the game and Mike Jackson was going to be facing Darren Dalton. And Mike Hargrove said, I, I had a choice to make. Do I want Jackson on Dalton 
or I can bring in Anderson, but I know they're going to pinch hit Jeff Conine, the right. And so what matchup do I want? Well, he went with bringing me into the game, get Conine out. And then regardless of the, the fact that my spot in the order came up and I was pinch hit for by Brian Giles. So I was out of the game before the bottom of the ninth inning even started. Yeah. Having said that, it wouldn't have mattered. There was no way that Mike Cargo, and listen, I would have loved it. I would have loved the opportunity. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself for, for the hometown team to be able to go out there and have the chance to get those last three outs and win a World Series. I'd have done nothing, uh, or I'd have done anything to be put into that, that situation. But at the same time, you're going to dance with the lady that brought you. Yeah. And Jose Mason, you, our closer, and that's who he was going to go with. You're going 162 games one way. You're not, at game seven in the ninth inning, you're not making, making that change over. You think about the, the questions that would have to be answered. Now, obviously, Jose Mesa did not get the job done, and we lost that game at extra innings, but that was the that was the play. He sends me out there for the ninth inning, and I give up a solo blast or something happens, and they tie the game. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, you just cannot, as a manager, he gets, uh, he gets put fired on this. in that situation, even though I'd have loved, yeah. I'd have loved that opportunity. Yeah, he gets fired in it before he gets to the locker room. All right, let, let me. Oh, he, we got he's lots not of, welcome back in. He can't come back to the state no, of Ohio. Forget no. Cleveland. <laughs> no, he's you're not right. allowed back in the state. All right, let's uh, let's talk uh, shop here. Uh, baseball, of course, we all miss it terribly. It's interesting because most people think uh, Cleveland is a football town. We had a, a survey the other day on our Facebook. Uh, what sports are they going to? What are they going to miss most? And unanimously, they said baseball. So I thought that was rather interesting. But, so, but let's just talk baseball in general because they have their own set of problems. We'll talk about maybe what they can do in a shortened season and all that. We'll get to that later. But the, the cheating scandal is, is uh, top of mind as far as baseball fans are concerned, I believe. At, le at least it is in my case. Uh, that and uh, also um, just what's baseball going to do to get better. They haven't even touched publicly the Boston Red Sox situation. So... Tell me from a pitcher's point of view, and you're a left-handed pitcher, although I don't know that that matters for the purposes of this discussion. Let's put me up there. I'm a 250 hitter. I'm a weak hitting shortstop. And, I'm, but if I, and I hit 250. But if I know what Brian Anderson is going to be throwing on this next pitch or at this at bat or the next at bat, what does that do to my 250 batting average? Well, if you can say unequivocally that you go into an at bat as a 250 hitter and you know every pitch that's going to come, uh, let's just say you're going to leave 250 in the dust. I mean, you're, you're talking about a 300, 300 plus hitter at minimum. I mean, these hitters, even the 250 hitters are, are good hitters. I mean, you're talking about the best of the best. Now, maybe they're not the best relative to their peer group, but their peer group is the best, are the best players in the world, hands down. If that guy knows what's coming and he can sit on a certain pitch, boy, he gets really good, really fast. And so, there is no doubt the advantage with hitters knowing what pitch is coming, whether it be a slider, a curveball, a fastball. They know right where to look for that pitch, the pitch they can handle, the pitch that they can handle, and they will become infinitely uh, a better hitter. There, there's no doubt about it. And it's funny, I, I heard the, uh, a pitcher, a, a question put to a pitcher, and they asked him, would you rather face a guy, you know, it was the steroid, you know, era a bigger problem, or, you know, the, obviously the Houston Astros and, and knowing what's coming with the banging on uh, the trash can and the cameras and all that. And while I think that overall that steroids were a bigger issue because it touched more players, more teams, and it was more widespread, um, I thought the answer that th this pitcher gave, and I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, but that he said, hands down, I'd rather face the steroid. The steroid guy doesn't know what's coming. Just because he's muscled up and maybe can do a little bit more damage than otherwise thought, or his bat's going to be a little quick, bit quicker, he still doesn't know what's coming. The guy that knows what's coming is the guy you're afraid of, and well, that's the guy you don't You know, So the, that would be, yeah. For the steroid uh, players, I thought the interesting thing as it evolved was that you, you, everybody, well, we assume Barry Bonds was doing what he was doing and a couple of other players like, like that. But it wasn't the Barry Bonds of the world that I thought was the problem because he's going to hit the ball over the fence and maybe hit it 20 feet further with, with steroids. It's the third string catcher who just gets to hang on because maybe he adds 15 points to his batting average and becomes somebody who can play 30 games in a season as opposed to not getting above AAA. Yeah, no, it, it, there's no question. It, it was abused all around the game. You know, you, you would hear uh, of guys coming back into spring training 
you know, he added 25 pounds of muscle. And you didn't even bat your eyes back then uh, about that stuff. You just thought, yeah, that's that's the way that, that this, you know, it's the way it works nowadays. Yeah. Um, but then you talk to doctors and you go, okay, in the off season, I go home, I keep a clean diet, I work my tail off, and I want to add some mass before the following spring training. How much weight legitimately could I put on with no help? No, no steroids, no HDH, nothing. And they would tell you 12. 14 pounds max. And yet every year you heard about guys 20, 25 pounds heavier, stronger muscle, you know, and, and it it was, and it wasn't even the muscle of being able to hit the ball further. You just, you didn't tire as much. You know, there were guys that I can look back on now that I played with and you could tell when their cycle had ended because all of a sudden ball's not going as far, bats not as quick. You cycle back on, uh oh, look at that. Bats quick again. Ball's jumping. You know, the miss hits are being hit well. And uh, and not only that, but there were pitchers. There were pitchers that abused that too. You would see guys that were 90, 92 mile an hour fastball guys come into spring training the next year, 95, 97. And you're like, how how can you do that? We've kind of gotten to the point that we've maxed out our velocity, and yet these guys are jumping three, four, five miles an hour through the offseason. And you really didn't put it all together until all this stuff started coming out. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, everybody was doing it. I mean, really, it was as widespread as you can imagine. You know, STO replayed some of the big games over the weekend. And you had the uh, Indians, get the uh, um, Tony Pena home run game. You had uh, uh, Kenny Lofton scoring from second base against Seattle. And, and the announcers, Bob Costas, even Bob Euchre was doing one of the games. They're sort of amazed that guys are throwing the ball in 94, 95. Well, today, if you're throwing 94, 95, you're, you're, you're lobbing it in there for batting practice. Hey, listen, I, there have been scouts. My partner down here with uh, Fox Sports Sun that, that is our play-by-play guy, Dwayne Stats, and he's been doing it for 45 years, and he's got tentacles everywhere with scouts, and, and he has a home that he keeps over in the Houston area, and he's got a good friend over there that does scouting in Texas. And he said, even with high school kids, he said, if you're not touching 93, 94, we won't even waste our time going out and look at you. And that's kids in high school. And that's because high school. That, the velocity has gone through the roof that you're right. I mean, nine, I remember Mike Morgan when, you know, in 2001, you know, he was a reliever. It was his 23rd year in the big leagues. And he said, boy, when I got to the big leagues, if you had a guy or two in your bullpen that threw 92, 93, yeah. that was pretty impressive. And now, You've got bullpens that start at about 95, 96, and you better have some, uh, you know, you better be able to hide the ball and have some deception if you're going to be in the mid-90s, and then everybody else is 97 to 101. Then you hear, it's, it's pretty incredible. Then you hear about some of these high school kids getting Tommy John surgery, just you know, blowing up a year or two of their potential career to give them that extra whatever they need to get into the big league. Yeah, well, here's the thing. You know, you look at all these programs out there. The game now is built upon velocity. It's all about velocity. Like I said with the scouts saying, if you're not touching 93, 94, we're not even going to waste our time going to look at you. So everybody knows it's velocity, and you have these programs to build that velocity. And there are a lot of these programs where you use weighted balls. And so, you know, not only are you putting all that stress and extra tension and torque on your ligament throwing a regular baseball, which already is an unnatural movement and motion, but now you're using balls that are heavier and then lighter to create arm speed, and then heavier. And so you're just putting extra stress and tension on that ligament, and it can only take so much. So it's not a surprise. You know, you can get bigger, stronger, create more velocity, but a ligament in a human being is a ligament. It can only take so much. Yeah. And and before too long, they're going to go. Well, the other thing I've noticed in covering the baseball for as long as I have, you go back to the 80s and 90s, as opposed to today. Today you see a 6'7 guy, and he's a pitcher, you never saw six, seven guys pitching. They weren't coordinated enough to, to, to make it. If you were six, two, you were a pretty big guy back then. Yeah. No, listen, we've got, we've got a couple of big guys. You know, Blake Snell, he's at six, five. Tyler Glass now, uh, six feet, eight inches tall. And I'll tell you, a, a lot of really good teaching out there mechanically. You know, the things that they are able to do now where they put these cameras behind you when you're throwing a bullpen, um, and they're able to see how efficient your delivery is. Are you staying behind the baseball and maximizing 
your velocity, maximizing your spin, maximizing your carry, and then the tweaks that they're able to make with these pitchers in regards to their mechanics to get them as efficient as possible. Even the tall guys, even the tall, lanky guys, they're able to get them. And if, this, if the guy's a good enough athlete, you're able to work with them enough that you make their delivery as efficient as possible. And that's where you get the maximum spin, maximum carry, maximum velocity, the movement on the, on the sinkers, uh, the, the downward tilt on sliders and curveballs. Um, it's pretty incredible what they can do now with, with the technology that's out there. And that stuff, you can even find it down into the high schools. At this well, I'll tell you what's incredible. Little Brian Anderson, the young kid from Geneva, has gray hair now in his beard. This is, this oh. is way, way too much. <laughs> yes. All right, I got to take a yes, break. I, I, we'll, yeah, we'll, go. Uh, whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about. But I got to do this. And when we get back, I want to talk about what the commissioner should have done if he could have done anything different as far as the cheating scandal is concerned. Did you know that? Uh, the Ohio Lottery has paid out over a billion dollars in winnings over the last six months. People are winning in record numbers, and winning is happening all around the state. Play an Ohio Lottery game today and play it tomorrow, too. Brian Anderson with us, former uh, Indian, former Wright Stadium also. We'll take a break. We'll come on back in a moment. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine. You can respond to our question of the day. We'll get it on the air as soon as we can. We'll come back in a moment. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Birthdays for today, Hall of Famer Luke Appling, born in 1907. Bobby Avila, last batting champ for the Indians, second baseman in, 19, uh, in uh, 1954. Don Sutton, Reggie Smith, teammates born on the same day. And Tom Foolery from 1947. And Larry Drew, born in 1958. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Brian Anderson is with us. Brian Anderson was the starting pitcher. Game three of the uh, 2001 World Series uh, in Yankee Stadium. First game played. Uh, after 9-11, uh, and uh, when President Bush came out to throw that first pitch, Brian, were you on the mound? Were you on the field or in the dugout? And no, I was neither. I was out warming up, so I, I missed all of the uh, you know the festivities before that game. My mind was elsewhere. It would have been elsewhere regardless. You know, you're getting ready to face uh, one of the most desperate teams that you're going to face, probably the most desperate team that I would ever have faced in my career, um, because if you'll remember that series, we won the first two games out. Um, in, in uh, Phoenix. And so we go back to Yankee Stadium up two games to nothing. So obviously th that's a game they cannot lose. That is beyond must win. Um, you're playing the first World Series game as you were talking after 9-11 in Yankee Stadium. So you know that the atmosphere is going to be beyond electric and probably nothing like you've ever seen before. You've got President George W. Bush throwing out the first pitch. And oh, by the way, you're going to tow the rubber and go head to head with Roger Clemens. So I knew that I had my work cut out for me and I was down there trying to get myself right in the bullpen when all the other stuff was going on. Yeah, I can imagine you're looking at going up 3-0 at that point. I'll tell you what, I don't care what your politics are, Republican, Democrat, 
It was a gutsy, gutsy pitch by President Bush to do what he did under the circumstances. You know what? You're, you're absolutely right. And it was funny because apparently he was down warming up in the Yankees' batting cages. Um, and, you know, they have always have it set up to where these dignitaries, uh, you, you know, will go out and throw the first pitch from out in front of the mound. And, uh, and Derek Jeter, you know, watching George W. Bush warm up, said, you, you know, you got to throw from the rubber. You, you got to go up on the rubber and throw the full 60 feet, six inches. And, yeah. oh, by the way, don't bounce it. <laughs> Don't bounce it. And, and it's funny because Todd Green, my first year here with the, with the Rays, you know, I was trying to come back down here and play again in 2008, ended up blowing out for the third time, retired, and they put me on the coaching staff. Uh, they created a position for me as the assistant pitching coach. Well, we had a quality control coach at that time, and that was Todd Green. And Todd Green was the guy who caught the, uh, the pitch from, from George W. from the mound and boy, he pumped a strike right down the middle of the plate. Yeah. It was it was impressive. All right, let's go back to uh, the commissioner of baseball, and he's made some questionable moves over the last. I don't I don't know how whenever he's had a chance to make a, a questionable move, he's done that. But what should he have done in the Houston case? And he at least publicly has not done anything about the Red Sox. What should he have done? Well, or what, or, know, what, I, or what could he have done? Well, you could have. I, I think the one thing that he could have done. Um, and that I wouldn't have minded there, you know, there are two camps, people that say you can't do that, you know, on and on and on, or that, you know, yeah, you can do that. And they could have vacated the title and said, you know what, you don't get that trophy and you, you can have your banner. Um, you can have the memories because we all know that you did win that world series, but you're not getting the trophy and it's not going in the history books. And so you could have vacated the title. And I think that would have uh, gone uh, you know, a long way towards appeasing people. Uh, but I'm not sure what else you could have done except to make the, the penalties even harsher. Let's think about this. And I, and I heard this, you know, be put to you, you go to 30 owners or, or it's at this point, 29 other owners. And you say, OK, you lose t uh, your first and second round picks, uh, you know, next year. So you lose your top four draft picks are, are, are out for the next two years. Um, you have to fire your manager and fire your GM, and you get a fine of $5 million. However, on the flip side, you're a World Series champion. How many would have lined up to do that? All of them? Half of them? Yeah. I mean, well, it, and especially nowadays, when I don't think that the manager is valued as it once was, you, you know, that they, they, the managers anymore you know, they don't want the strong personality down in, you know, in the dugout managing the game. You know, Terry Francona is one of those guys that, you know, he's a throwback. And you see Dusty Baker's getting a chance. You don't see those guys in the game anymore. They're going younger, and right. they want guys that basically act as a liaison between the decision makers upstairs in the front office that are running the game on the analytics side. And then you're like the conduit to the players. You know, you, you sell the players – you know, or you, you get the players to buy what we're selling. That's kind of how the role of manager um, is anymore. And then you look at general managers, and you've got like two or three assistant general managers, it seems like, on every team. So I think those roles, uh, in a sense, have been devalued here in the game today. All right, let and me so, go back. Okay. All right, let, me, let me just go back to what you said about vacating the title. Let's take, let's take Brian Anderson as, as an example. Let's say 1997. You, the Indians win that World Series, but let's say you did what Houston did to, to get there. 15, 20 years later, you're going back to uh, Progressive Field to be honored by the fans for the 20th anniversary or whatever, and you know you didn't do it right, and you know they cheated. I, I would think if by doing that, taking that away, that, that's a pretty tough thing to live with, that, that you're being honored for something that you know you didn't get the right way. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would think that that would be extremely difficult. Um, and, and that's why I think that this scandal, you know, what's been worse, what the Astros actually did, and obviously I think that that is the answer, um, or how they've handled it. Because how they've handled it, it was deplorable what they did. And it is awful how they have handled th this situation from, you know, coming out with the apology, if you even want to call it that. I don't even know if I would use the word apology on what they put out there. And then the arrogance of these guys, they're making sure they let everybody know how proud they are of that championship and, and just 
Um, I think the arrogance of the organization have, has really turned off a lot of people. Not to mention, I don't think that many people think that they've been very sincere um, in, in their, if, like I said, if you want to use the word apology, that the, the sincerity is not there. I don't think people feel that it is um, for the most part. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's just an overriding terrible situation that was made worse by how it was handled. And so we'll see what comes of it. We all know what was going to come of it with the fans. If the season would have been on time, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if we do have a season here in 2020, uh, you know, what the fallout will end up being. Up, up until two months ago, uh, Altuve and Bregman were my two favorite players in baseball. So not, not anymore. So all right, we're going to no, take a break. No, I don't blame you. When, when we come back, Brian, we're going to talk about, there's uh, some word out there, although nobody knows based on what's going on, but. If they have to go to a 100-game season, there are some ideas what to do with that. And if you have any other ideas what to do, if we can get the, whenever, based on how you can get this started, you let us know. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You've been hearing us talk about Northeast Factory Direct for quite some time, east, west, and south. The south, of course, the new one in Macedonia. And uh, now uh, they're, they're scrambling like all of us are, trying to get the, uh, to, to stay in business and get your business, and they deserve it. They're open for essential business, taking extra precautions to keep you safe, including limited extensive physical cleaning, physical distancing, and minimizing contact. And uh, people are calling Alex to find out about certain things that are at the store. He, uh, he's not only giving you information, he's giving you his cell phone number. You want to call Alex at 216-288-1808, 216-288-1808. We'll come back in a moment with Brian Anderson, BA from Geneva, Ohio, Wright State University. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Celebrate Nature Stone's 30 year anniversary with a free Brian, Nature I wasn't Stone able to hear you. Brian, During 2020, we will be giving away 30 free floors to 30 very lucky customers to say thank I you for making Nature Stone. I wasn't able to hear you. You were telling me something in my ear, and I wasn't able to hear it. Garages, basements, and more. Call or visit NatureStone.com today to we'll register to we'll win, and we'll the, send you a copy of our new we'll buyer's guide absolutely game season free. The, There's no purchase the necessary. Winners will be chosen monthly. With over 30 million square feet installed for more than 60,000 customers, it's easy to see why I always say it's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Give me those names again? Gotcho High Lottery Pick 3, I see. Yep. Those okay. glasses are hip. <laughs> hip? <All right. laughs> Most people think I'm a square. But what's wrong with that? A box bet can increase your chances of winning. And what is a box? A square. <laughs> there are so many ways to play. There's coming out the wazoo. Go oh, shucks. Look at me yammering on. <laughs> Put a lid in it, picky Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Play the Ohio Lottery Pick 3 today. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors <coughs> you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch Dylan of North your Olson. family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Time for a how come quickie. Uh, Brian, how come if the bases were 91 feet apart instead of 90, there wouldn't be as many bang bang plays? That's right. <laughs> that's I, that's I a good one. Yeah, I imagine they'll find a way to, to have it anyway. All right, lots, uh, lots to continue to talk about. Brian Anderson with us now, one of the TV voices of uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, and he does a terrific job, one of the best in the business. Um, if, if there is no season or it's totally shortened and all that stuff, wouldn't you think now, if you knew that for sure, that you're, the powers to be in baseball could sort of get together, sit down, and say, "How do we fix this game of baseball if we get it back? If we don't get it back till uh, uh, 2021, is this an opportunity to say what's wrong?" Because to me, Manfred only thinks about the speed of the game, and I, there's more to it that needs to be done. 
Well, you know what? It, there, there are certainly some things that you can look at. I, I, you know, we can get into the rules changes, and you, you talk about that where a reliever, if he comes in, he has to face a minimum of three batters unless he gets, you know, the last out to end an inning, and then he doesn't have to come back. I, you know, go on and on and on. But here's the thing. For me, and I understand what Rob Manfred is getting at with the speed of the game, but I don't think that that's the problem. For me, having to sit up there and call these games, it's not the time of the game. It's the pace of the game. It's a lot of nothing happening. It's a pitcher throwing a pitch, and then he doesn't throw the next pitch for 37 seconds. What could you – you're a relief pitcher. You've got a fastball. You've got a slider. Why in the world do we have to take that much time in between pitches? Those are the things I think that 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 has driven baseball and the fans crazy is just sitting around watching the pace of this game just start to dry up, especially when you're talking about we are playing in the era of the three true outcomes. Strikeouts, strikeouts, I believe, as for the for Major League Baseball, have gone up every single year for the last 11 years. So it, it, the strikeouts, every year you're going to break a new record. And then home runs continue to go through the roof. And then the number of walks that are taken. So you've got a lot of nothing going on. And so I think that for me it's more of the pace than, than the time of the game. And so you'd like to see them speed it up a little bit. They've been kind of implementing that in the minor leagues as far as forcing these pitchers to get back on the rubber, throw the ball. Yeah, and get, get back on the rubber, throw the ball. Just pointing to first base for the intentional pass hasn't taken too many hours off each game, I, I don't think. No, and, and that one, you, 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 can, you can keep that one. But, yeah, that, that's a, a nominal effect. And, you know, they're trying all these different things. But, I, I, you know, it, this is a, a chance, uh, you know, that if the season does go away, and, and that's what my greatest fear is. You know, you, you see what's going on with this coronavirus and how is it – it's not only affecting, you know, our country, but the entire globe. And then you think about the social distancing that, that's going on. And, and, and the fact that if you are starting to flatten the curve, all that means is you're just spreading out the length of time uh, before the virus starts to, you know, starts to subside a little bit. doesn't mean anybody's become immune to it. It's just started to go down as far as the number of cases. And you're talking about into the summer, maybe into the fall. I cannot imagine unless there is a treatment that is absolutely ironclad and lockdown or a vaccine, and certainly I don't think any vaccine is going to be ready by this fall. I think without those two things, that the season is certainly, you know, in jeopardy. And, and mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden you, you hear people say, well, well, you could just, you know, find a, you know, a spot where you play in front of no fans. And while in theory that sounds good, well, what about the support staff and the players? All it takes is one of them to come down with it. And then they spread it to two, three, four. Now, that team is in quarantine. Are they out of the league now? Yeah, and you got to. They're not going to be bulletproof in this thing. No, you and know, you gotta, even if with your without fans. Yeah, you got to go to hotels. You got travel to do, and in, in fact, even if it's uh, at a neutral site. All right, so yeah. um, Matt Spiegel, who's with 670, the score out of Chicago, says he's got an informed source. If it does get to be a 100 game season, he says the season would begin on July 1st and end on October 15th. No All Star game. The World Series would be held at a neutral, warm weather stadium, preferably Dodger Stadium. But if the Dodgers make it to the World Series, the uh, games would be held at either Anaheim or San Diego. Are you hearing any talk about that? Um, you know, it's interesting <laughs> as you put that up there. I just uh, read part of an interview that Joe Buck had been given. Uh, had given, and, and he, he was talking about the season. Will there be baseball in 2020? He said, man, I go back and forth on this all the time. But the people that he has talked to has said that if you're going to do a season, if you're going to have a season, you got to get it going by July the 1st. And it sounds an awful lot about that graphic. Sounds like that graphic that you just put up there is that you started on July the 1st and you ramp it up, you, you play into October, and then you start looking at warm weather sites, you know, for, for uh, the playoffs and, and the World Series. So I think there's a lot of credence to that plan. Um, and I think that that's the way that you're going to you're going to have to get this done, because, you know, you start to go less than 100 games. That's not a major league season. That's summer ball. That's American Legion, Connie Mack, you know, travel ball. It, that, that's, you know, playing 70, 80 games. That, that's not going to be a true test. You know, even 100 games really isn't. But at least you get to triple digits with, with the number of games. Right. But, well, the um, other the other thing. Have to that day. Yeah. The other thing, though, is the morale of the country. You know, we just want to. 
it's kind of self-centered. We, we want to see baseball. We want to, we want to yep. see it, even if it's 100 games or 80 games, even we know it's a ter terrible uh, uh, way to decide a championship. Uh, but I think for the morale of the co country, we, we need something like that. I, I think you're absolutely right. And that's why you've seen all of these sports, when they have canceled events, they've done it reluctantly. They've done it because they just simply have run out of time and they're not going to be able to put it on because I think everybody understands, especially baseball, it's game of summer. It's what people look forward to. It's, you know, you, go, you spring training, everybody gets excited because guess what? You know, especially it's people spring. up north, people in, in Cleveland, yeah. it's, you know, spring is getting ready and the baseball season, and that takes us into summer. Everybody loves summer. And then even into fall, what a wonderful time of year the fall is, especially, you know, up where we live. Yeah, and great. so there is that thirst for sports and, and, and you're just at the, at the feeling of normalcy, the feeling of two teams out there playing baseball. Yeah. I'm telling you, when we do get back to playing, whenever that is, I cannot imagine the goosebumps that will be had by all when you're getting ready. I know how excited I still get to, to broadcast these games. Now forget about being a part of them as a player, but to broadcast these games on opening day, but opening day when this pandemic um, has passed us by and, and, and we're able to get through it, which we will. And when we're able to get through it and we start a new season, I cannot imagine what that opening day or that first game is going to be like. It will be like nothing we've really ever been a part of because we, we've never been through anything like this. And the uh, greatest game ever invented. Let's go to Bill in North Olmsted, who I know feels the same way. Hi, hey, Bill. Go ahead. You're on with Brian Anderson. Hey, Brian. Uh, I've talked to you before. In fact, uh, Les and I are about the same age and certainly followed the Indians for 65, 70 years. But I think the biggest disappointment I've had in watching the Indians was that game seven in 1997. And I remember talking uh, about a pitch that uh, Mesa uh, shook off from Sandy Alomar. And do you, can you recall anything about that? Was there an awareness in the uh, dugout that, hey, what's he doing? Sandy knows uh, the pitch he should throw. And then Charles Johnson got that hit, which I thought was the key hit of that inning. Do you remember much about that? Well, uh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact, because I, I've often said when, when asked about that game and, and Jose Mesa, you know, that ninth inning, and, and obviously the Marlins were able to, to scratch across that run and send us into extras. Um, I, I said, you know, Jose had done an unbelievable job for, for us all season long and for the team. Um, but if there was one pitch that he could have back, it was the two-strike slider to Charles Johnson. And I, it's funny because I, I watched that special that Major League Baseball put together. In fact, I got to be, you know, a, a big part of it. Uh, the dynasty, I think it was called the dynasty that never was. Um, and I had no idea. I knew that that was a mistake pitch just because you know the game. Uh, but I had no idea that they were calling the pitch from the bench. Because if you go back and you look at the sequence, he absolutely blew two fastballs by Charles Johnson. He had right. no chance. He had absolutely no chance. But I'll tell you what happens sometimes with a pitcher is you outthink yourself. And you go, well, wait a minute, he's got to know that I'm coming with another fastball because I've just owned him on the last two. So he's going to make the adjustment here. I'm going to trick him. And instead of trusting your stuff, you try to trick him. And all you did was play into Charles Johnson's hands because he had a slider speed back. There was no way he was going to you know, be able to catch up with another Jose Mesa fastball. And instead, he not only got a slider that was more in his speed range, but it was also not a very good slider. It was a slider that was still on the corner of the plate with a little bit of elevation. And what that ended up doing is, is Jose Mesa, unfortunately, ended up doing Charles Johnson a favor. Uh, but that was one of those things that I had no idea that they were so con – everybody knew that that was not the pitch to go with, but no idea that it was being called from the bench until you go back and look at that sequence and you see Jose Mesa actually you know, shaking – the pitch off and stepping right. off the rubber, Bill, going thanks. back, looking Bill. in, and Sandy goes right back to the fastball, shakes it off again, steps Bill, off we gotta go. again. Thank you for the call. You know, uh, Brian, you're talking about making a guy look bad on two pitches, and I, a, a former major leaguer once told me that Hank Aaron was the best at that. On the 0-1 on the pitch, if he got fooled, he, over, he overacted and made it look like he got fooled way more than he really did, assuming he's gonna, the guy's going to come back with the same pitch. So it was the batter setting up the pitcher.
in that case. Except, except you're talking about Hank Aaron. <laughs> yeah, didn't matter. Charles Johnson. <laughs> yeah, those, Tony Gwynn would do the same thing, but that's a different level of yeah. hitter. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. I could talk to Brian Anderson all day. You can explore your interests and find a program that puts you on a path to the right uh, fu to a bright future from Tri-C, offering over 1,000 courses and over 140 career and technical programs. Go to tri-c.edu for more information. We'll come on back in a moment. More sports and less will be continues with Brian Anderson exclusively on cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One heating and cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. This date in sports history, 1987, the NCAA adopts the three-point shot at 19 feet, 9 inches. Eventually, it goes to just over 22 feet, 1 inch when that uh, was all said and done. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Brian Anderson, former Indians pitcher, uh, terrific pitcher uh, with the Angels and uh, Diamondbacks. Did I miss anybody? Royals. Royals. Kansas City. That's right. Yeah, you got hurt bad then, didn't you? Was that with the Royals at the uh, time? You know what? I was actually well. That's yeah. 2005 was the end, but I was having a pretty good season with the with Cleveland in 2003. Um, and so the the Royals that was the year that they surprised everybody. Got off to a good you know start, and so I got traded there in August. Um, you know, one of those waiver deals to try to you know to give the uh, you know Royals a, a chance to get into the postseason. I remember going over there. Tony Payne was the manager. Oh, he called right? me in his office the first day I got there. He said. From now until the end of the season, you're starting every five days. I don't care every five days. I don't care if you get rained out four in a row. Every five days till now and the rest of the season, you're going to start. And so I ended up between August 24th and the end of the season, I got seven starts with the Royals and ended up going five and one with them. Wow. Unfortunately, we we still you know missed out on the playoffs, so yeah. it, it didn't it didn't end up working right. out. But but, um, but you still that was it. But you still have Nebraska football to go to if you need it. Well, yeah, and that's that's been a rough few years. Last nice of you to bring that up. It, it's been uh, they haven't been to a bowl game in two or three years for crying out loud. And now they let everybody in a bowl game. All you gotta do right. is get six wins. Right. So it's been uh, it's been frustrating. And by the way, this season you look at Nebraska's last five games. Of course, they're all conference games, and it's not in this order. But it is literally uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Penn State, Ohio State. You got a chance to lose all five of those babies. Yeah, I mean, just, Minnesota, Wisconsin. We don't. We don't even yeah. talk about Ohio State. I, they're an absolute jerk. Right, let, let me. Let me talk. I'm going to talk football for a second, but we're going to tie it in with you in baseball. You got the situation that nobody's had before of getting preparing for a season that they don't know if there's going to be one or when it'll start. So how do you, how do these players and baseball players, for that matter, how do you, how do you train when you don't have other guys in the league that can train with you? You don't have any supervision. You don't. Uh, you may have videos that you can work from. How, how tough is it for these guys, or does it depend on the individual player as they get ready for this season? 
you know, it depends on the individual player and what resources that he has at his disposal. Because what I will tell you is baseball is a skill sport, and it's a highly skilled sport. When you're talking about getting into that batter's box and trying to turn around a 95, 97-mile-an-hour fastball, nasty slider, the speed at which the game moves um, is incredible. And so if you're not able to replicate that, and you don't have anybody to even play catch with, or you're throwing off of a wall or hitting off of a, you know, a, a machine, I mean, not everybody is going to be able to see live pitching while we're all in quarantine. So, you know, as, as, as much as you can go out and try to stay sharp, it's going to be extremely difficult for baseball players to be able to do that unless somehow they're able to get together. There's a couple of guys in town that could get together, and that's probably frowned upon at this point. Sure. But I don't know how you really can do that because, like I said, it's so highly skilled, um, and it moves at such a speed. I'll never forget one time during a rain delay, Mike Cargrove telling me, we're sitting there just talking about the game, and there might have been a, a couple other players there too, and he said, you know, the interesting, about this, interesting thing about this game the further you get away from it, the easier it looks. You know, he said, you sit in the dugout, the ball gets hit into the gap. You know where the cutoff men are supposed to be lined up. You Everything you see before you, you go into the stands. The pitches don't look as crisp, look as fast. The game looks but He said, you watch a game on TV and it looks like a piece of cake. Like that, just keep throwing the pitch there. They can't hit it. He said, until you actually get out there on that field. And I, you see the speed at which the game moves and the skill at which it's played, it's extremely difficult. And I don't know how these guys are able to stay sharp with, you know, undergoing what we're, what we're undergoing right now. You can get all the workouts that you want from your, your trainers, but if you can't replicate the speed and skill of the game, you're going to start to fall behind. There's no doubt about it. All right, so the Browns, as everybody knows, has a new coach, Kevin Stefanski. He's got to get... Uh... Uh, his mindset along with his uh, quarterback, Baker Mayfield. And somebody asked him about uh, Baker and about the conditioning. He says, in my talks with Baker, they have, the players have the right attitude. The strength and conditioning aspect of it is going to be difficult. Their body and their shape is what, uh, what they're in uh, th that matters. We have to be creative and make sure that they're getting their work in. Gyms are closed. There's a Spartan nature to it. And I, I'm glad to hear that Baker and some of these guys are attacking this thing. And, and Brian, going, going to what you said, that's baseball, which is not a physical game. And uh, so you, in football, you got the physical and the mental. Yeah, you do. And, and you know what? These guys are going to have to find creative ways to, to stay in shape. Now, the one thing that the football players have going for them right now is I'm sure that most of them have access to weights. They're going to be able to run outdoors, whether they go down to a park or it's in their neighborhood, whatever it is. And the trainers can send them physical programs to where they're able to go out there and physically keep themselves in shape. Now, here's the thing. You're also, you have to hold your own feet to the fire. You have to be self-motivated or it's not going to work out. You know, you hear about guys coming into camp sometimes not in the best of shape. Well, now you're really, you know, going to be pushed because you're doing it by yourself on your own. But you do have that opportunity. And then, you know, once the playbooks are able to be released, you're able to start going through those and, you know, and it's going to be tough because for football players, it's going to be all about timing once they get into camp. Yeah, I know the playbook and I'm in great shape, but what's my timing like with my receivers, my running backs, the blocks, the calls from the line, all of this stuff, it becomes very difficult. And how much time are they going to be able to have to get that locked in before they have to tee it up and, and go play? East, West, and South, that's where you're going to find the uh, three great locations for Northeast Factory Direct. Before you do anything, go to northeastfactorydirect.com. Or call Alex on his cell phone, 216-288-1808. Brian Anderson is with us. We'll continue. Uh, I want to ask an Albert Bell question in, in regards to what the Browns have going on with Odell Beckham. We'll take a break. We'll come back in a moment. More sports and Les Levine with Brian Anderson exclusively on Cleveland.com. Get Nature Stone for up to half off and never replace your garage flooring again. Cracked, uneven garage floors are dangerous. Thin paints and poly coatings you can do yourself are slippery, peel, and don't correct problems. Why pay for a floor that won't last? Only a professionally installed Nature Stone garage floor is safe and corrects problems that paints can't. And Nature Stone comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. So there are no hidden maintenance costs. Schedule online today at naturestone.com to qualify for up to half off. Hurry, offer ends April 30th. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. 
At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Presque Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. This date in Les Levine sports history, 1979, in a softball game, Les asked Gus, the umpire, why he didn't hustle to make a call at second base. Gus said, well, my eyes jiggle when I run. Ever have an umpire like that, Brian? <laughs> Not like Gus, no. No. That, that, that's, uh, I mean, certainly a, a character. You know, you do remember coming in, though, and, you know, some of these, you know, the Bruce Fremming, you, you remember him, how squirrely that he could be. Uh, Joe West, you know, he's still that way and he's still active. So you, you still do have some characters in the game. But, you know, let's be honest, they've sanitized the game of baseball. When was the last time you saw a good, you know, manager umpire no, confrontation? They took, they took you that very away. rarely see it. And, and, allowed. And, and by the way, on, on the protesting of, of a call, they should not allow the managers or coaches or anybody to see it. If you don't like the call, you make your decision if you're going to if you're going to challenge it or not. Don't don't spend five minutes watching it. All right, talking about Les, football. Is there, is there anything is there anything worse than a close play and the manager's hand goes up as he looks Nothing. back to the video guy on the phone? Nothing. It, 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 it's the worst. Yeah, it That's not worst. baseball. It, 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 All right. Eh. So Jason Whitlock on uh, Fox, uh, for, uh, Fox Sports One said the other day, "I think the teams are interested in winning and winning right now. Odell Beckham Jr. has very little value." He's not all into football. He costs too much money. He's not so great a player as everybody's made him out to be. He's benefited from a league that has, had, uh, that has gone soft. So let me ask you this. You played with Albert Bell um, and against him. Um, how tough was that knowing for players who played with him every day, knowing he was going to be a problem, but he put up such great stats, you almost had to put up with whatever the problems were. You know, I, that's a, this is this is such a great uh, topic to talk about. I, I think you can have a player like an Albert Bell or an Odell Beckham Jr. You know, you you know the kind of the baggage that that comes with them. Where you can win with them, and I think the only way that you can win with them is if at the end of the day that that player is team first. Period. Not going to make things about himself. Certainly, there may be an out, you know, burst here or there, but he's not going to make it about himself. He's going to be a team first guy. You've got a fighting chance if that's the case. Um, if not, you know, I, I, I mean, good luck to you. You know, you've seen all these. You, you, I've heard these discussions where they talk about the diva wide receiver. How many world championships has a diva wide receiver won? Not many. And, and there, yeah, not many. Not many at all. And so, you know, that, that's, what, that's what you wonder. And I, I, I got to be honest, you know, there were a couple of incidents a, a season ago with Odell Beckham Jr., but I thought overall I was expecting a lot more nonsense than what we actually yeah. got. None of, it was bad, none, of, none of it was bad stuff. It was just little, uh, I don't know. Goofy, right. Little Hunt and Peck kind of typing. Yeah, just, yeah. just little goofy things. But, yeah. but I thought that he was on his best behavior uh, a season ago, and, and you know, obviously, I think being with Jarvis Landry helps that out, and a position coach that that uh, he had in college being there. I, and I have often said, if he's not going to straighten up with those two guys being around him all the time, and Jarvis Landry, as we well know from Hard Knocks, is not afraid to call guys out and to try and keep right. Kevin the line as best he can, um, then then th there was just it was just not going to work out at all. But at the end of the day, it's got to be team first. You've got to buy into the team, and especially with football. 
Because in my opinion, where I think that baseball is the greatest sport out there, and I know you do too, I think football is the greatest team sport because 11 guys aside and you are so reliant and the success of the play is so reliant on the guy next to you. You could have the perfect play call. You can have the perfect snap. You can have perfect everything. And, oh, the right guard doesn't do his job. Well, the whole play doesn't work. And so it, it's an amazing – it's just an amazing sport to watch, and that's why I thoroughly love doing the red zone this past fall with, with Andre Knott um, because you just you, – I just love the game of football, and I love the team aspect of it. And if it's not all about the team, I don't care how talented you are – it's going to fall flat. And I think, unfortunately, we saw a lot of that last year with the Browns. Lots of big names, lots of excitement and expectations. And it was a verifiable train wreck. Let's go back to the phones. Let's go to Newton Falls. We'll say hi to Lee. Lee, good evening. You're on with Brian Anderson. Uh, good evening, Les. Great show tonight. Tonight? Any night you have Brian <laughs> Anderson on, we're talking baseball. Yep. Go ahead, Lee. What's on your mind tonight? I just had a couple observations. We touched on this earlier about the difference between uh, yesteryear and today. I was watching the uh, 52 World Series, Game wow. 7 today, and it's amazing how... Let me guess, the Yankees won. The Yankees won, of yeah. course. But it's just amazing how small the players look compared to what yeah. the players of today look. And Mickey Mantle was not were, a very big guy. The pitchers were just... It just seemed like they were just... Lobbing it up there, of course, you can't tell on TV, but, you know, the pitchers today, it's like they have to gyrate and twist and throw it with every ounce of strength in their body. Yeah. All right, Lee, thanks so much. Hopefully right. we can get baseball back for you. That would, that would, that would be nice. Got a bunch of uh, emails to get to, but I'm going to save them until Monday. Uh, Monday, Ken Carmen from 92.3 The Fan will be here. Bud Shaw will be here Tuesday. Brian... Uh, Got about a minute. Anything you want to just that's been weighing on your mind forever, and that you couldn't wait till this show to say it? Well, you know what, I, Les, it's, I'm actually glad to be back on with you. I know that we've had a couple other misses, um, uh, you know, along the way. But um, I, 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 like I said earlier on, I, I hate that it's under these circumstances. Um, you know, you just, uh, you know, you say a prayer for everybody, and everybody stay safe. You know, follow those social distancing guidelines. Um, you know, stay strong. We, we will get through this. It's going to be, you know, an ugly few weeks, an ugly month, and maybe it extends beyond that. But we're all going to be able to get through this. There's going to be light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, we'll be all be better for it um, at that point. But until then, you know, you just you've got to find your routine and, and, and try to find uh, something to be joyful about every day. OK, um, I don't think I've ever asked you this. You, you do a great job with the Tampa, Tampa Bay Rays. Was there a time in your baseball career that you said, when I'm done with this, uh, I, I want to be a pitching coach, I want to be something, or I want to do uh, TV? Did, did that come to you somewhere along the line? It did not. And, and it's, it's funny that you asked that because a lot of times, because I guess I was always good with the media as far as if you wanted to interview me, I'd give you an interview. And, and, and I, I had people throughout my career at different times say, you know what, when you're done playing, you ought to think about getting into TV. All I will tell you is in one ear, out the other. I'm playing right now. I'm 27 years old, and I'm going to play forever. So you hear those things, but you don't really put a whole lot of stock into them because you feel like I've got, a, I've got an entire career to go here, and I've got a lot more time that I'm going to be able to go out and play that game. When it's taken from you, now you start to look at your options. Yeah. And TV, for me, was the easy choice because I did get to do a little bit of the coaching thing. But the I, one thing that I have found in TV, and Les, you'll love this because you, you've been doing this for God knows how long, is when they're counting down in your ear, three, two, one, and it's live TV, the red light goes on on the camera, and it's go time, you get that little flutter of, of being you know, anxious and ready to go and understand there's nowhere to hide. You better be prepared or you're going to be exposed. And that adrenaline rush, I still get it to this day. Not like being a player, but it's the next best thing. Um, of, of getting that heart flutter and, and getting out there on, on live TV. There's nothing like it. All right, I've never had that problem. Now you're going to make me think about it all the time. <laughs> That's because you're no. a pro. Let me I, just... I, I, you know, I, me, I, amateur hour over here. Well, let, let me just tell you one thing. If you ask any of the guys who do what I do, anybody who's worked in this town and has been around you, unanimously, you're the best guy to interview, the best guy to have around, best guy to ask questions to, and 
We appreciate you joining us whenever you can. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, no, no Stay less. Thank you so much. And, and obviously, with like I said, with all that we're going through, uh, don't be afraid to hit me up again. I, I, I'd love to come back on, and I appreciate you having me on tonight. The door is open anytime. All right, Brian Anderson is the best. Thanks, Brian. We'll keep in touch. Stay safe, the kids, too. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, Brian Anderson. will do. Thank you. Very good. Been in some of the biggest games in baseball history. Our thanks to him for coming on. All right, that'll do it for us. We'll save these quickies and a couple other emails that we we'll want to get to. We'll save it for Monday when Ken Carmen is here. Tomorrow night, it's uh, Dave Bacon and the Weekend Winners. That's tomorrow night from 6 until 7. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent. You love it, always wanted it, and there's never been a better time to get NatureStone than during our spring weather breaker sale. We're breaking spring sales records with up to half off beautiful NatureStone garage floors, patios, porches, and more. Correct cracked, uneven concrete that thin paints and poly coatings can't. Every weather breaker savings comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, and there are no hidden maintenance costs. Schedule online today at NatureStone.com to qualify for up to half off. Hurry, offer ends April 30th. It's not just a floor, wow, it's NatureStone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine.